Hi everybody, it's the History Teacher. This episode examines the post-Civil War period of Reconstruction. Approximately one in ten Southern men died in the Civil War. The men, women, and children who remained alive were confronted with a ravaged land and widespread destitution. The economy, society, and political structure of the South were shattered. Most in need were the formerly enslaved people, referred to as freedmen. Except for their liberty, freedmen had almost nothing else. To help them, Congress established the Freedmen's Bureau in 1865, which distributed clothing, food, and started schools for African Americans. However, the Freedmen's Bureau was understaffed and underfunded, so didn't have the resources to help most of the 3.5 million people who had just been freed. They were on their own. President Abraham Lincoln didn't wait for the Civil War to end to start Reconstruction. Lincoln's Reconstruction plan was that southern states would be readmitted into the Union once 10% of the population, except high-ranking Confederates, swore an oath of loyalty to the Union and pledged acceptance of the end of slavery. Under Lincoln's lenient plan, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Tennessee were reincorporated into the Union. However, a group in Congress called Radical Republicans refused to recognize the readmission of these states. The Radical Republicans, led in the House of Representatives by Thaddeus Stevens of Pennsylvania, opposed Lincoln's generous Reconstruction terms. The Radicals had three goals, to punish the South for their rebellion, to ensure that former Confederates were deprived of social and political power in the post-war South, and to extend the vote to black men, knowing that they would vote for Republicans. Lincoln's assassination was good news to some Radicals, who expected the new president, Andrew Johnson, to agree with their goals. Instead, Johnson's Reconstruction policies resembled Lincoln's. For readmission into the Union, Johnson required that Southern states ratify the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery, repudiate the Confederate debt, and renounce secession. Even without Southern support, the 13th Amendment was ratified in December 1865. Johnson also suggested that Southern states grant black people the right to vote. At this time, however, no Northern state granted African Americans the right to vote. Southern states rejected Johnson's terms. Instead, southern states passed regulations called Black Codes. The Black Codes limited black people's freedom of assembly and travel, introduced curfews, and required African Americans to carry special passes. The Black Codes also restricted freedmen's access to public facilities and institutions. The Black Codes strongly resembled the laws which had regulated slaves. Congress responded to Southern defiance with the Civil Rights Act in 1866 and by granting the Freedmen's Bureau judicial and executive powers in the South. Congress overrode President Johnson's veto of these bills. Congress ensured the constitutionality of these measures by passing the 14th Amendment, which defined former slaves as U.S. citizens, barred high-ranking Confederates from public office, and reduced the congressional representation of states that prevented black people from voting. To ensure its ratification, Congress divided the South into five military districts, each ruled by a military officer with near-dictatorial powers. Southern states were required to ratify the 14th Amendment and to adopt constitutions that granted black men the right to vote. Only by forcing ratification by the Southern states was the 14th Amendment added to the Constitution. Congress realized that its conduct was unconstitutional, but it was determined to proceed. To prevent the Supreme Court from invalidating any congressional actions, Congress barred the court from reviewing cases connected to its Reconstruction policies. To ensure that President Johnson didn't interfere with congressional Reconstruction, Congress passed the Army Act, which reduced Johnson's authority over the Army. To further limit the President's powers, Congress passed the Tenure of Office Act, which prohibited Johnson from firing any cabinet officials without congressional approval. This was intended to protect Secretary of War Edwin Stanton, who was allied with the Radicals in Congress. But Johnson fired Stanton anyway, and Congress impeached President Johnson for violating the Tenure of Office Act. However, by a margin of only one vote, Johnson was not convicted by the Senate and so was not removed from office. However, Johnson no longer tried to thwart Congress. Ulysses S. Grant was elected president in 1868. Radicals in Congress saw that Grant won only because black people in the South voted for him. Recognizing the power and importance of the black vote, Congress drafted the 15th Amendment, which would grant black men the right to vote, and submitted it to the states for ratification. Like with the 14th Amendment, the 15th Amendment was only adopted because southern states were forced to ratify it. Remember, at this time, the South was under military occupation by the North, and states were compelled to carry out the wishes of Congress. 
neither the 14th nor the 15th Amendments were popular in the North. During Reconstruction, the expansion of social programs in the South led to higher taxes and higher state debt. These financial issues, coupled with the political turmoil of the era, led to declining Northern interest in trying to transform Southern society or to improve the lives of African Americans. Meanwhile, some Southern whites resisted Reconstruction with violence. Groups like the Ku Klux Klan terrorized African Americans, including beating and murdering them. The Klan also used fear as a tool to prevent black people from voting to ensure white political supremacy. The goal of Southern whites was to reclaim their states from what they perceived as control by Northern carpetbaggers and former slaves. In fact, African Americans never controlled the legislatures in any Southern state, and only in South Carolina did black members outnumber white members. In 1877, federal troops were withdrawn from the South, which marked the end of Reconstruction. By that time, Southern whites had successfully restored, quote, home rule in the South. That meant Northern influence was expelled and black people were ousted from political positions. Over the next two decades, the condition of African Americans in the South would deteriorate as strict, brutal segregation was imposed and Southern states found ways of circumventing the 15th Amendment to deny black people voting rights. The second-class status of black people would persist another 90 years after the fleeting gains of Reconstruction had disappeared. Okay, so there you have Reconstruction. Thank you for watching and see you next time.